Welcome back to Hudson Appliance for another episode of Wicked Good Food. I'm your host, Matt Williams, and tonight we're going to talk about tailgating a little bit. It's about time high school football started, college football started, professional football started, and you know, there's nothing that says you have to tailgate a football game. You can just tailgate in your backyard. But, so we're going to do a couple things tonight that are a little different than your normal tailgate that'll kind of add to what you already do. We are going to make for the last thing we're going to eat, but it's going to be the first thing we make, is a chocolate and rum truffle, which are going to be fantastic. These nice, super rich truffles. One of the things, the thing I've been asked for the most ever since I went to a game in Foxborough is to make hot and sour soup because that was the best thing ever. It was a Monday night football game and it was freezing cold, but we all had a big jug of hot and sour soup before we went in. The other two things we're going to make is a prosciutto wrapped rosemary skewered shrimp. And we're also going to take this big big bowl here and we're going to cut up all the things that would go in an Italian grinder and put it in on the inside. First thing we're going to start with is making our truffles. In this pot here, which I'm going to turn on, <clears throat> is about three ounces of butter. That's melted a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and add about eight ounces of chocolate. These are semi-sweet chocolate chips. <clears throat> and what I want to do is I want to be very careful that this doesn't uh, burn. That's one of the reasons why I put the butter in first and let the butter melt. This is, this is super, super quick and easy. All right, this isn't one of these recipes where you need to take a whole bunch of time and have a water bath. We're gonna take a little extra care. We're gonna melt our butter first and add everything together, but we're not gonna have to do a water bath. So the fat, the butter that's in there is gonna help. Whoops, I dropped a little bit there. <clears throat> It's gonna help our chocolate to melt without seizing, without binding all up, and also without burning. So this is a time where we need to be relatively gentle. So now all these recipes are things you can make ahead of time. The shrimp are something that you can eat cold even. You can make them the day before and then serve them the day of the game, throw them on the grill, but you can also serve them cold. These truffles ha have to be made the day before or at least earlier in that morning because they actually take a couple hours to set up in your freezer and then we'll scoop them out and we'll get into that a little bit later. All right, while that's going really slowly, I'm gonna grab these. What this is, is this is a wood ear mushroom or a wood ear fungus. And this is the stuff that you find in hot and sour soup, those little mushrooms that are really chewy. So they come dried and you can actually maybe hear the crinkle of them. I'm gonna throw them in this, which is a little bit below boiling water. And I just wanna stick them in there and I'm gonna let them soak. And they'll rehydrate a little bit and they'll be much more palatable. All right, since I'm standing here, I'm gonna turn the heat up on my induction stove here a little higher. But you can see we're melting nicely. You always wanna scrape the sides of your pan, in particular if you're using a gas stove, because what happens is the flame will crawl right up the sides of the stove and that'll be a really, really hot spot. And because your chocolate or whatever you may be doing is really thin in that spot, it'll tend to burn a little faster. All right, so this is going, this is a little too high, so we'll turn it back down. So all you wanna do at this point <clears throat> is get your chocolate chips all melted. So it's nice and smooth consistency. If you wanted some little chunks, you could actually leave your chocolate chips in there, let them be a little bit chunky. But we're pretty much nice and smooth now. So now to this, I'm gonna add a cup of heavy cream. And pour it right in there. And then I'm gonna add about an ounce, about two tablespoons of corn syrup. Exactly right there. See that? Perfect. All right. I want to mix this around a bit. Now these chocolate rum truffles get their name from the chocolate that's in there, but also the half a cup of rum we're going to add. So I have a nice aged dark rum here. It doesn't matter what you use, you can use whatever you like, and it doesn't have to be rum. So I want to do exactly half a cup, maybe just a little bit more. But you want to be careful. You can't be the uh, old Julia Child cooking and just dump the whole bottle in because it won't actually set up if you have too much liquid in there. Now we just want to stir this until it all dissolves back together again. So we can let this warm up just a little bit. And then what we're going to do is actually stick this in the freezer. <clears throat> so I'm going to take a minute. I'll finish getting this nice and smooth. I'm going to warm up our pan and get ready to start our hot and sour soup. 
This is nice and smooth. It's perfect. So I'm going to dump it into this bowl. Now this bowl's actually been in the refrigerator. This is going to help it to set up a little more quickly. Now you can use two bowls. You can use a little uh, baking sheet if you want. But what we want is we want this to get firm. Once it gets firm, we'll be able to scoop it out and it's, they're going to be awesome. So I'm going to stick this in the fridge. <clears throat> then we're going to look over here, check out our woodier mushrooms here. Look at how much water they've absorbed. Perfect. So we're going to go ahead and start making our soup. We'll turn this on relatively low. And to that, I want to add a little bit of vegetable oil. Just enough to coat the bottom of the pan. So I'm going to turn that up a little bit. Now this is a recipe that you can use with uh, ground chicken or ground pork, but I actually have some chicken that I just diced up and I'm going to add that right to this once this oil heats up a little bit. I do need to cut up some of the other ingredients. One of them is an onion. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that so it can sit straight, sit flat, cut it in half. I'm not going to need that half. Go ahead and peel this. Now this is a soup. This is pretty darn similar to what you'd get in one of the Americanized Chinese restaurants that are around here. But feel free to add whatever you want. You don't have to stick with just Asian ingredients in it. And I want to dice this relatively small, but once again, it's your soup. However large you want to do your onions, do them however you want them. I only need about half of this, so. Oh, one more. Yeah, so I was at a game, like I said, it was, a, it was a Monday night game, it was cold, we had been eating, we may have had a few beverages, and it was freezing, it was time to go into the game. The best thing was we had these plastic cups, big, big plastic cups, and we put our hot and sour soup in them, and we just drank it. I kept our hands warm the whole way in, we threw our cups away once we got into the stadium, it was fantastic. So in the game I'm going to in a couple weeks, which is also a Monday night, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Alright, I want to cup some mushrooms. Now, same thing, if you want your mushroom that big, leave it that big. I don't like mushrooms that, uh, that big of a hunk of them, especially cooked in something. So I'm just going to go through these, just make them just a little bit smaller. And then <clears throat> garlic, I'm going to take, cut off the little woody end. This has already been peeled, this garlic. I'm just going to smash it right underneath my knife, kind of like so. Then it's all mashed up. Give it a quick little cut. That's going to go in. We're going to use some scallions. I'm going to use the white part, mostly. Cut off the little root end. Slice these up. All right, now a little more. Let's check this out. All right, this is nice and hot now, so we're ready to add our chicken, which I stuck in the fridge. Let me grab that. All right, no I didn't. I stuck it right here. Here it is. We'll go ahead and slide this in here. Should get a little sizzle when it goes in. All right, and we just want to get a little bit of color on this. Just let it stir for a little bit. I'm gonna use some tongs. You can easily make this a totally vegetarian soup. Just don't use the chicken, obviously. And later on when we go to add, we're going to add some chicken stock to it. But you can use a vegetable base if you wanted. If you want to go all the way and have it be vegan, you can just leave out the eggs. We're going to add a little scrambled egg at the end. So this isn't like some dishes where we want to get a really deep, dark color on this. Because we want our chicken to be more of a texture, add some savoriness to it. But we don't want to get that caramelized chicken flavor for this dish. So it's all turned color just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and add my onions, add my, sca my scallions, and we'll add our mushrooms and garlic as well. We're going to let this all sweat together. All right, give it a quick little stir. It smells fantastic. All right, we can go ahead and hit it with a little bit of salt. Perfect. All right, now we're waiting, while we're waiting for this to sweat a little bit, I'm gonna take our woodier mushrooms here, pull them out of the hot water, and my how they've grown. Now there's always 
a little like root end right in the middle that's a little bit hard that you want to trim out and you'll be able to feel it. It's not going to hurt you if you don't trim it out, but it's just not a great texture. So I'll just check each one. Some of them might not have it. And pull that out. And I'm just going to cut these relatively small. I'm going to julienne them essentially. Because they still, they still keep a lot of their texture and they're a little bit chewy. I'm not a big fan of getting a soup when they're uh, really thick. All right, we'll take a look at this. This is looking great. We can turn our temperature up a little bit now on it. Perfect. Now I'm going to add about two ounces of soy sauce. This is a low sodium soy sauce, lower sodium soy sauce. It still is pretty high in sodium, exactly two ounces. I'd rather be able to control the salt myself by adding salt rather than have to rely on my soy sauce for the salt. About two ounces of rice vinegar. So, yeah, we'll add a little more. I like rice vinegar. So between our vinegar and our soy sauce, that's what it's going to give us the sour in our hot and sour soup. Now we're going to go ahead and add our chicken broth. And you can see this is a really, really quick dish to put together. There's nothing in here that's not going to reheat very well. So we're going to add uh, about a quart and a half or so. We're essentially going to add whatever's left in this box. That's exactly how much you need. All right. We'll stir this around a bit. We're going to let this come up to a simmer. We can add these. And I'm going to add a little bit of hot sauce. Now there's a lot of different ways you can add some heat to this, some pepper flakes, some Asian peppers, but I like just oh, a little more. I like using just hot sauce because that's going to add a little more acidity to it too. And this is a hot sauce that's not super hot, but it has some really nice flavor to it. Perfect. Now we're going to go ahead and let that just come up to a simmer. Now the next thing we're going to do is I have these meats sitting out here and I don't want, to want them sitting at room temperature too long. So I'm going to go ahead and start to cut some of our meats. So I have a hot capicola here. Now you can just go to the deli and say, can I have a piece that's half an inch or so thick? And they'll slice it right on the slicer. There's nothing that says they have to slice it really thin. Now you can cut these however you want, but think that you're going to be tailgating and you're going to be at a football game. So you're not going to want to have to chew a piece too, too much. So I'm going to make them relatively small. All right, so I'll just move that off to the side. I've got some provolone cheese here. Same thing. We'll cut that up. Cubes about the same size. Now use whatever cheese you want in here. I mean, this doesn't have to be filled with all Italian meats and cheeses. You can do whatever you want, whatever you have hanging around. All right. I've got some Genoa salami here. Same thing with the salami. Now one thing you want to you want to be aware of. This is something you can make ahead of time. If you put your dressing on it more than the morning of, some of your cheese will kind of break down a little bit. It'll get a little bit soft. So it's a good idea to make it, cut all your meat up, keep your bowl separate, and then maybe when you get to the game, you toss it in your dressing or toss in ingredients that might have a little more liquid to them, and then put it all together. This is a hunk of just deli ham. I'm going to cut this into some strips. You don't have to go over the top and buy the most expensive products either for it. Um, if that's how you roll, well then, good for you. I wish I could afford that. But uh, this is some decent tasting ham. And then, let's see. Then I've got some pepperoni here. Same thing, I asked them to cut it a little thicker. So everything we're looking at is about the same size. I'm gonna do two of these pepperoni. All right, so we're going to take a break for a minute. I'm going to finish cutting up a little more of this meat, grab a bowl. We'll get our other vegetables that we're going to toss together. Our soup is just coming to a simmer now, to a boil now. I'm going to drop it down to a simmer and let it cook a little longer. We'll be right back. Welcome back. So I finished cutting up a little more of the meat, a little more of the cheese, got the other stuff back in the refrigerator. I realized I forgot a very important ingredient in our hot and sour soup, and that's this. This is actually ginger. What I do is I, I'll buy a bunch of ginger and peel it, 
And sometime I'll show you, it's really easy to peel with a spoon. You actually use the side of a spoon. I put it in my food processor and then freeze it in ice cube trays. So I need about a tablespoon. This is two cubes worth. It's thawed already. So I'm gonna break it in half. I'm just gonna drop in what I need. It's already all diced up. Such, such an easy way to do it, rather than have to have fresh ginger and cut it every time or worry about it getting moldy on you. So one cheese I didn't cut was cheddar cheese. We're gonna cut a little cheddar cheese to put in here. And then, <clears throat> excuse me. And then we're gonna add a little bit of our prosciutto. Now prosciutto is a ham, it's a dry cured ham, and it originates in Italy. Uh, but you can get some dry cured hams in the United States now. But it's very chewy if we were to have it in a hunk like that. So I have this sliced very, very thin. And I'm just going to cut it into like little ribbons here, julienne it. And the rest of that I'm going to use for our shrimp. Go ahead and toss that right in, spread it out. I'm going to take some red onion. This is half a red onion, which I already peeled. I'm going to cut it in half that way. And just cut it to little bits like this. Now, if you don't like onions, don't add them. If you, you kind of like the crunch of onion, you can do like what I've done in some of the other shows where I've salted the onion beforehand before adding them. But use as much or as little as you want. I think that's going to be good right there. Remove these. I've got some Kalamata olives here. These are really salty, really briny olives. I'm just going to kind of give them a quick run through to cut them, most of them in half. And that's, I'm doing two things there. One, it's going to get a little more surface area they're going to spread out. But also by cutting them real quick, I'm going to make sure there's not a pit in there because I don't want one of my guests to uh, bite into a pit. Now I have some sweet cherry peppers here. I'm going to try to make everything in here edible. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the tops off of these. Now one of the most important things, I think, about going to a tailgate is the entertainment. It's not just your friends, but it's the other people that are hanging out around you and whatever sort of trouble they get into. But you can meet some pretty cool people. And so I always think it's important to bring a little bit of extra food so you have something to trade. So if you see somebody over there that's smoking a whole hog or whatever they might be doing, you can walk over and say, hey, you want to do a little uh, bartering here? But it's like always a good idea to have a little extra. You're all there for the same reason, all to have a good time and root on your team. One of the most important things about tailgating though, because sometimes people aren't at their full capacity maybe as game time approaches, is you wanna make sure you're practicing good sanitation. It's really easy to get yourself sick at a tailgate. So you wanna make sure you bring uh, something to wipe down your surfaces with. Some of those bleach and disinfecting wipes are actually fantastic. Great thing to bring along with you. Um, and make sure you wash your hands. Make sure you keep your food cold. Bring your coolers. Get a bunch of water bottles, fill them up with water, or you buy water bottles, freeze those, throw them in your cooler so you don't have to take up room with ice packs. Then when the game time comes or the game's over, unless you're like at one of these games that it's 32 below zero, but you'll have some water that's nice and cold ready for you to drink. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut up a dill pickle. And another thing to think about is coolers don't have to just be to keep food cold. It's essentially an insulated box. So you could heat food and keep it in your cooler as well. Obviously you take the ice packs out. All right, you should be able to smell this soup. It's fantastic. That ginger, that is definitely what it was missing. I have some pepperoncinis here. I'm gonna go ahead and dice a few of these or slice a few of them. I'm not worried about the seeds getting in there, but I don't want the stems in. There's a couple more. And feel free to add whatever you want. You can add some fresh herbs to this. If you get some nice basil in your garden, this is about the time when basil is about done outside. So if you're looking for a, another way to use it up, throw some in here. Another great thing to do is that trick that I did with the ice cube trays with the ginger. Take it, puree it with a little bit of olive oil. It'll help to coat the leaves so they don't oxidize so much. And go ahead and throw them in your freezer and pop out a, a cube when you need it. I'm gonna dice up a little bit of tomato as well. Just pop the core out of these. So I'm gonna go ahead, finish dicing up these tomatoes and clean up our cutting board, get ready to put our shrimp together. We'll go ahead and get our shrimp together and we'll bake our shrimp and we'll check on our truffles. All right, welcome back. So, have this all mixed up, 
cleaned up our area a little bit. I added the juice from the pepperoncinis before I got rid of the container to this to add a little bit of acid to it. I want to add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. That's going to be our dressing. Very simple. Essentially vinegar and oil. Now, you can add some salt, but be careful because you have a lot of salty meats and some cheeses in here. But this will kind of hold everything together. The, the um, oil is going to pick up some of the flavors from all the other things and kind of toss it around. So it should be a wonderful flavor. I'm going to stick this in my fridge until we're ready to use it. Now over here, our hot and sour soup is simmering nicely. I want to taste it and make sure that we're we're where we need to be on it. Oh, that's really good. It's hot and sour. And it's burning my mouth, so it's extra hot. I'm going to go ahead and shut that off because we have this one more step to this, but we're not going to do it yet. Now, the last dish we're going to start working on is our rosemary skewered prosciutto wrapped shrimp. So I have some nice sprigs of rosemary here. What I'm going to do is actually strip the rosemary leaves off like so. And these would actually be really nice, diced really fine and tossed into that salad. Not too much of it. But what we're looking here for here is this stock. I'm going to cut it in half. I've already gotten a head start on a few of them. And then we're going to take our shrimp. These are 16 20 shrimp. That means that there's 16 to 20 shrimp per pound. So you can get larger ones, you can get smaller ones. The higher the number of the shrimp, the smaller the shrimp, the more there are per pound. So I'm going to grab a piece of our prosciutto here and just wrap it around. These have the tail on it still. I'm just going to wrap it around and hopefully poke this right through just like so. Now this is going to help hold it together when you throw it on the grill. We're here in the studio. We're not going to throw them on the grill. We're just going to bake them. And this is what you could do if you wanted to do them the day before. So we'll go ahead and roll up a few more of these. So I wouldn't eat the, the um, rosemary stem. It's not going to hurt you, but it's going to be a little a little bitter tasting, but it's going to infuse the center of this shrimp with some great flavor. Now, if you wanted to be all fancy, you could actually do something like this where you just peel off the bottom end, get one of your shrimp, wrap it up, and just kind of skewer it. Come on, get in there. Like so, and kind of have that sticking off the back. But beware that that's going to make it, it's going to smell great, but it's definitely going to catch on fire on your grill. But fire's not necessarily a bad thing on your grill. So while we were on break, I checked our truffles. They're starting to set up nicely. So what you want is you just want them to get nice and firm. So they're essentially scoopable. So if we had, if we had a little more time, um, I'd let them just hang out in the refrigerator, but I actually threw them in the freezer to speed up the process a little bit. But I'm going to keep going. I'm going to wrap some more of these shrimp. I'm going to beat up an egg is going to be the next thing we do. We're going to float that right on top of our soup. We'll scoop up our truffles. We'll get Arthur up here and we'll uh, taste some more wicked good food. All right, welcome back. So I finished doing all our shrimp. They're all wrapped in the prosciutto. They're all stabbed with a hunk of rosemary. I left this one big fan on there so we can see what happens in the oven. Now you notice I didn't salt the shrimp. Shrimp have a little bit of salt in them anyways. They live in salt water, but the prosciutto is very salty. So you want to be careful that you, if you salt your shrimp beforehand, there's a pretty good chance it's going to be too salty. We'll go ahead and throw these in the oven. Now I've got a 450 degree oven here, a really hot oven, because what I want to be what I want to happen, excuse me, is that by the time the shrimp is cooked all the way through, that really intense heat is going to crisp the outside of our prosciutto. All right, so what I've got here are two eggs. I'm going to go ahead and crack our eggs into this bowl. Because what we're going to do is we're going to add these to our soup, but we're going to let them actually cook right in the soup. But you want them so that they're not too, um, so that they're nice and loose, kind of watery. So you want to whisk them pretty well. I'm literally just going to kind of float this on top of the soup, pour it around like that, and it'll cook almost instantly in our soup. I'm not going to stir it until a little later on. All right, now what I want to do is remove all this, and we're going to go ahead and cut our loaf of bread here. So I'm going to take 
And remember, we're making a bowl out of this, so you can make it pretty good size. But you don't want to, remember how much salad we made, so you don't want to cut too far down because you want a pretty tall bowl. So that it'll fit most of it. Not that having extra is a problem. Then reach your hand right in there and you can just separate the rest and pop that out. So we've got a nice hollow bowl here. I'm going to go through and pull some of this excess bread out. Now you can certainly leave this in. It's going to make your bowl look fuller if you don't have as much filling. But this can be used for whatever. You can use this for croutons or breadcrumbs or use it to dip in here. Heck, if you're doing it at the game, you can make this, squeeze it up, make it a ball and throw it at somebody. Don't tell them I said that. But Now with our top here, there's a few things you can do with this. We can take and cut a lot of the bread off the top, like so, and just cut it into big cubes for people to enjoy with their salad. Just like that. In another episode, I'm going to show you a really, really cool, um, essentially like cheese bread that you cut up bread into cubes like that, toss it in cheddar cheese. It's my grandmother's, my dad's mom's world famous recipe. But then you've got a little cover. You can throw this on top if you want or dice this all up. I'm just going to stick that there for now, move this out of the way. One of the last things we have to do to get ready for our truffles is after they come out, we're going to roll them in stuff. The two things we're going to roll them in tonight are going to be some walnuts and some cocoa powder. And what that's going to do is it's going to help if they happen to warm up, help them from sticking to each other and um, making a mess. So I just want to take these, chop them up a bit. You want them relatively fine. All right, I'm checking out our soup here and it looks perfect. We can see, I'll move this over here so we can see, that the egg's just floating on the top. I'm going to take my tongs and just run them through a couple times and break up that egg. And now that's strewn all throughout our soup. And that is done. So I'm going to turn our heat off on that again. Soup is all done. Our bread's ready to go. Our shrimp's in the oven. We're going to take another quick break. When we come back, I'm going to pull the truffles out. We'll scoop those. We'll get Arthur and see what he thinks of what we made today. Hey Arthur, good to Hi. see you. Hi Matt, welcome back. Thank you, thanks for having me again. I'm going to show you what we did here. And so for you folks at home, I took our salad, dumped it into our bowl. So we've got a whole bunch of Italian meats and cheeses, some vinegar, some uh, extra virgin olive oil on there. A bunch of things you can do with this. Yeah. I mean, you can put that just on a bowl and eat it yourself, put it on top of some lettuce. How cool would that be to stick that on top of a sausage or something? Ooh. I mean, if you're in the middle of your tailgating and you've got nothing else to do, put it in a cup, walk around. Just having some of that as you're throwing around the football or something. Looks delicious. We've really got does. these prosciutto, prosciutto wrapped shrimp and they've got rosemary for a skewer to hold it together and give it a little flavor. We made a hot and sour soup. So I just bowled this up and put a little bit of green onion on it for garnish. And then the last thing here, I pulled these out of the refrigerator and I have this tiny little scoop. I just did a scoop like so scooped it and you can see here that I put some in the walnuts that we cut up and some in some cocoa powder. Want to give these shrimp a whirl? Sure, let's take a bite. Now before we take a bite though, I've been asked to give a shout out to Grammy up in Maine because apparently this is one of her favorite foods, so. What do you think? Now that's wicked, wicked good. good. 